Hey everybody, it's Josh here with a very special edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. You are about to listen or watch the 10th anniversary live special for Happy, Sad, Confused, recorded at New York Comic Con just a couple days ago. It all begins right now with a very special message from a very special guest. Enjoy. Prepare your ears, humans. Happy, Sad, Confused begins now. What is up, New York City? New York Comic Con, welcome to the 10th anniversary event of Happy, Sad, Confused, the iconic podcast of the one and only Josh Horowitz. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly, because I could read minds. Jesus Christ. Rock, you look exactly like Josh. I know. I know. Every time I look at Josh, it's like looking in the mirror. It's like my twin. Look, I got uh, a lot of jobs like you guys. I got a lot of jobs, but the most important job I have right now is to tee up the man of the hour himself, Josh Horowitz. And just to let you know, a little bit of context on our relationship is I, in a way, and I told Josh this the other day, in a way we kind of grew up together in this business, in this crazy business of entertainment in Hollywood. We kind of grew up together years and years ago, uh, almost going on two decades, Josh and I, started doing interviews together. We've done interviews everywhere from taxi cabs to the biggest stages in the world. And I will share this with you guys really quickly. When I first broke into Hollywood uh, many, many moons ago, uh, I always made note of the interviewers and the journalists who weren't that nice, but I also made note of the interviews and the journalists who were really kind and cool and welcoming me to Hollywood and welcoming to this, uh, to this industry. And one of those is Josh, which is why we've become such close friends. And I gotta tell you something else about Josh before we get the show on the road, is I've always felt like, you know, it's a kind of a rare air place if we, all of you, me, Josh, everybody, if we could get to a place where when we wake up, the thing we wanna go do, we're running towards because we're passionate about it and we're running towards it because we love what we're doing and we love that particular thing. Well, when it comes to film, when it comes to TV, when it comes to actors and filmmakers and our business, Josh runs to it. He does it with passion. He does it with authenticity and he's just a great human being and I love the guy. So ladies and gentlemen, New York City, without any further ado, uh, I want to bring out the man of the hour, the man with the power. Uh, my only wish right now is that I was with you guys there in person, that I was uh, personally in person, live interviewing and bringing out Josh. But let's face it, I'm The Rock and I got way more important shit to do. So without any further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, New York City, Josh Horowitz, the founder, the man behind Happy Sad Confused. Josh, happy 10 year anniversary. I love you, buddy, and have a great night. Love you guys, have fun. Welcome everybody, hi, how's it going? Uh, this is insane. I'm already gonna cry. Uh, welcome everybody to the 10th anniversary of Happy, Sad, Confused. I'm Josh. Uh, you guys are amazing for coming out tonight. Uh, this is crazy. How did we get here? I don't know. The short answer is uh, New York Comic Con, in their uh, infinite wisdom, said, hey, maybe Josh, you want to host a live event uh, at New York Comic Con. I said, hey, wait, it's the 10th anniversary. I'm gonna bring five of my favorite human beings together and celebrate this crazy podcast that I created in my dingy little office at MTV. And here we are, here we are, guys. Um, backstage is like the coolest assortment of folks, like short of like a Knives Outcast. This is like gonna be so fun tonight. Um, we have coming up in just a few minutes, David Harbour, we have Zoe Chow, we have Sam Hewen, we have Jack Quaid, we have Jamie Alexander, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be an awesome time. Um, so before I bring them out, I just wanna say the kind of the longer answer is how we got here for a little backstory is, I started this podcast truly uh, as a passion project. It was literally in my office at MTV. I was missing doing kind of long form conversations that could be both smart and silly and hopefully everything that is me. And for years, I think we did it in anonymity, and somehow, all these years later, my passion project became something that a lot of folks seem to enjoy. And that means so much to me, and it means so much to me that you guys 
are the largest live event at Happy Second Fuse has ever been a part of. And I'm told this is the largest ticketed event at New York Comic Con ever. So thank you for that. Um, and yeah, like I've never done one of these with like five disparate guests, most of which don't even know each other. So we'll see how this goes. This is a big experiment, guys. Um, one last thing to say before uh, we get to the show tonight. Uh, if you could put up the QR code, uh, if you guys have questions for this amazing group uh, of actors, um, enter this QR code. Hopefully it's going to show up on the screen anytime now at some point. Um, and you'll be able to submit your questions and we'll try to get to some, some questions. There it is. There it is. Um, so yeah, submit your questions that way. But first my questions. And first, my first guest of the night. Uh, this guy embodies everything I love about Happy, Sad, Confused. He is a brilliant actor. He is smart, but he also can make fun of himself. Uh, he is the star of Thunderbolts coming soon. He is the star of Stranger Things. He is the star of Creature Commandos, an awesome show you're going to enjoy very, very soon. Please give a big New York City welcome to David Harbour, everybody. Come on. Yeah. What's up, nerds? Yeah. We're here. That's the energy I'm looking for. There you go. I just pounded some Korean barbecue backstage. <laughs> Not a you ready for some burping. Yep. David, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks um, for having me, Josh. This means a lot. You were, you truly were the first person I reached out to, and there were no negotiations. David was like, if I can sneak away from those pesky kids on Stranger Things, I'm yours, basically. Any chance I get to be with adults, <laughs> I take. That's being charitable to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Although the kids from Stranger Things are now like 35. Right, right. They're getting married. It's all crazy. Um, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about you are a veteran of Comic-Cons. Uh, I think the first time we met actually was at San Diego Comic-Con years ago. Um, was that for Stranger Things season two, maybe? Something like wow. that. I know. Memories. Memories. Like the um, no, let's the... not do that. Let's yeah, not okay. subject them to that. Um, but in an actor's career, Going to Comic-Cons is not what you sign up for. It's not what you imagine eventually. Where in the spectrum of weird stuff you do <laughs> is coming to Comic-Cons at this point in your, in your life? Is it I mean, old I hat say, now? I love it. Uh, I'm so lucky to have this career that I never dreamed I would have. I'm a very pretentious theater kid who went to... Uh, Oh, look, look at that horrible picture. We're gonna show that in a second. They can't see it. <laughs> oh, they can't see it yet? <laughs> Get ready. Um, uh, yeah, I was like, you know, I was the guy, I don't know if any of you guys are theater majors or if anybody like, I did acting in high school and stuff like that. You know, you probably like plays and stuff. I was like the guy who liked Tadeusz Kantor and Jerzy Grotowski and like um, Anthony Narto and like was reading dense Brecht texts about like theater and alienation and thought I would be some, you know, weird East Village, like indie director guy who, uh, and then I wound up, you know, being like the doofus in the Marvel movies. And <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, it's really, yeah, it's really extraordinary. But I just love coming to these things. I say it, I say it all the time. So I sound like a broke record. And it sounds insincere every time I say it because I say it to so many Comic Cons. But I will say that like, I just love the people here. I love the freedom that we have to be uh, passionately enthusiastic about dorky stuff. Uh, and, uh, and you know, we didn't have this stuff when I was growing up. Maybe it was there, but it was so niche. But now it's so popular and it's so accepting of people that I think it's a really special space. And I feel like I just love it. I mentioned, yes, I mentioned that you are kind of the perfect happy, sad, confused guest. Because yes, like you have kind of like- I'm happy, sad, and confused. All right here. Most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, we can go deep and go nerdy on any, any kind of genre, but you're also down. And we've had some fun times over the years. Uh, the image he's referring to, if we can put it up on the screen, uh, this is a time that David Harbour let me come over to his place. That's his bed. That's your actual bed. Baby. That's my bed. 
Did you burn that immediately after the shoot? Did you have regrets? No. My girlfriend at the time made me keep it. <laughs> Said she didn't want to change the smell. Right. Oh, wow. Something about the Horowitz <laughs> odor that yeah. she really... It's legendary by now. We have another, we have another, <laughs> another image, speaking of Stranger Things. Do you remember the time I made you don a wig to play Eleven uh, for a one-man show? Oh, yeah. What do you think, guys? Pretty good, right? I think they went with the wrong girl when they chose Millie Bobby Brown. I mean, look at that. Look yeah. at that stare. Look at that intensity. You were intense. Oh, God, dreamy. How goes all things Stranger Things? Because I need the update, man. Have you shot the ending? Is it done yet? <laughs> I don't want to get you into trouble. We're getting such trouble with Netflix, but who cares? They can, they what need. are they going to do? Fire me? We're at the end. So this season has been a, you know, it's the last season. It's season five of the show. It's been shooting for months and months and months now. Like, I think we've been shooting for 10 months now. Um, and we have another couple more to go. Uh, we're it's kind of block shooting, which means we go back and forth in the script, shooting lots of different stuff. But I will say, I can say this. Yeah, I can say this. We uh, read through the final episode of season five. And look, I, I'm very close to the show. So I have very strong opinions, and they may not match yours if you're a fan of the show. I'm an actor on the show, so I see the nuts and bolts, and I sometimes get very mad at what I think is like a bad episode, or like whatever this season I didn't like, or that, or whatever. I can be very critical of this show. And that, see, that episode, episode eight, they land the plane. And it is, uh, it is the best episode. It's the best episode we've ever done. And I'll, and I'll tell you one thing. At the last 20 minutes, like all you people who cried at when Hopper died in, uh, in season three or whatever, and then I tricked you, showed up <laughs> bald. Uh, the end of this episode, when we were reading it, just us reading it, about halfway through, like people started crying. And then about the last 20 minutes, it was just uncontrollably crying waves of different people. Noah Schnapp being my favorite. I'm just like, literally, <laughs> I mean, but I think part of that also is the fact that these kids, it was their childhood, right? Like they started the show when they were 11 and 12. And here we are reading and they're, it's 10, nine, 10 years later. And they, and we examine that idea. And it's so well done and so beautiful. And I was totally prepared not to come out here and say that. <laughs> and it, it's such a great episode, and it's such a great season. You guys will love it. Wow. And you'll love it when you see it in 2031. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Only 63 more months of shooting left. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they got to get it right, man. Take 27. <laughs> Hopper gets out of car. <laughs> I think we got it, Matt and Ross. I think we got it. You know my ulterior motive over the years in building our friendship was just to get me closer to Winona Ryder and mission accomplished. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm happy to be of service. Oh, you are in the lucky few. I'm so she privileged. She is an extraordinary creature. What's the most Winona-ist thing lately you've witnessed <laughs> on set? What's class? Give me a classic Winona-ism with love. Oh my God. Or I'm going to give you an option B. Is, is Jopper Nation going to be satiated? Are they going to be happy? Oh, you will be well fed. Um, I just... I just love her so much. We, um... Okay, so we got really into, um... God, now I'm blanking on her name. Who's the actress in Chinatown? Oh, Faye Dunaway. Yeah, Faye Dunaway. Yeah. Um... Occasionally we go on these tears of like, because she's so knowledgeable about old movies and old stars and stuff. And there are these memes of uh, Faye Dunaway <laughs> being very mean, trying to film this thing and getting really annoyed at crew members and stuff. And so we would just watch these things over and over again. And also, Faye Dunaway had a show, like a reality show, with Vivica Fox 
and some acting casting director from LA where they judged 10 actresses and it was called The Starlet. And it was a reality show where Faye Dunaway would critique and Winona and I watch it all the time. It is our favorite thing ever. And I just want you to know, if you'd like to see more Winona Ryder and David Harvey be ridiculous, feel free to text Netflix and say, we would like Winona Ryder and David Harbour and Josh Horowitz to come judge 10 <laughs> actors. Because I would love to do a reality show like that one day. But yeah, we watch a lot of reality TV and old movies together. She's, uh, she's amazing. A gem. Uh, a, a quick tease on Thunderbolts. I know that you can't say much, but we're starting to see. It looks awesome. Um, you you, you kind of tip me off that there's a lot of cool turns from different actors in this that you're excited about. Do you want to, do you feel like you can say who you're most excited about? Who's going to surprise the audiences in this one? Oh, oh yeah. I, I mean, everybody's good. I will say like Lewis Pullman's pretty great young actor. If you guys don't know him yet, you probably do. Um, he's, pr he's going to be pretty great in this. I mean, but you know, I mean the best one is, sorry, it's Florence Pugh is like, Everybody's great though, like Wyatt's gonna be great. And like, I just had such a wonderful experience filming that movie and I usually am pretty miserable on set. <laughs> and this was like a joy every day. We were, they were so funny and smart and like, you know, so good at story and character. I just love, love, love this movie. And I can't wait for you to see like the movie and also kind of what it does in the universe, uh, in the broader universe of the MCU. and. Um, yeah, I just, I love it. Now we know Downey's coming back, so you need to stick around. We need to see Harbour and Downey mix it up. Come on. That would be lovely. <laughs> One of your cast members I caught up with recently, uh, would you like to see a little me quick message from Sebastian Stan for you, David? Oh, Jesus Christ. This is short but sweet. Here's Sebastian Stan oh, to Mr. God. David Harbour. David, how are you? <laughs> it a minute, but you know what? I remember your advice. Loud and clear. Just be pretty. Still trying. All right, man. You've done well. He, you took it, Sebastian. Look at that shot. <laughs> you look incredible. Do you All right, I'll give it up for that? Sebastian Stan, by the way. Has anybody seen this movie, The Apprentice, as so, well? So good. On the acting tip, he's incredible in that movie. He is, yeah, truly. It's like one of my favorite movies recently. It's an incredible movie. He's unbelievable in it. Do you remember giving him that specific note? He, he told me in a scene. Say pretty? Like. I don't I, remember that at all. I said so many offensive things to him throughout <laughs> that shoot. All we would do is like rip on each other. Really? Me, Wyatt, and him basically would just sit around, and talk about, you know, just be mean to each other all day. We <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Um, I could talk to you all day, but we have four more amazing folks to bring out. So let's share the wealth a little bit, shall we? Okay. Yes. So what I wanted to do is not only have folks that I've known over the years, many times on Happy, Sad, Confused, but introduce some new blood. And I love this actress. She's fantastic. She's your co-star in Creature Commandos. You know her from Party Down, um, the after party. Please give it up for Zoe Chow, everybody. Here she is. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is thrilling. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Hi. This is Zoe's. Oh, you're right here. Do you right sit here. over there? Yeah, I was, oh. I was thinking. No, no, Zoe, you're right here. here. No, Zoe, you're oh, here. Oh, no. This is Zoe's first Comic Con, everybody. Hey. Can you tell? <laughs> you already knocked over the water. How oh. embarrassing. Damn it. <laughs> first and last. No, welcome, Zoe. <laughs> yeah, um, right. So, first of all, fun fact you guys co star in a new show. How much time have you spent together prior to this moment tonight? Uh, zero percent of the time. This is correct. Zero time. Uh -huh. <laughs> I met her backstage. Yeah. This is the nature of anime. She's animation. great in Creature Commandos, though. <laughs> she is. She's really good. <laughs> she Very is. funny. So before, okay, before we get to Creature Commandos, Zoe, what is, like, is Comic-Con to you? Is this your world at all, or does this feel like you've jumped into a strange Planet. Yeah, well, I did, when I introduced myself to David, I was like, I feel unprepared. <laughs> um, because this is new to me, and I am new to the DC universe, and to comics in general. <laughs> I'm a real noob. Um, so I'm terrified and confused. <laughs> what was Are your... you at all happy, though? 
Um, We're going to get her there. Mm, hopefully soon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then you belong on the panel. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got confused down, though. Nailed. What was your bag growing up? What is, like, what would a convention devoted to what would get Zoe Chow out of the house? Gosh, this is so lame. Like, um, Cary Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Do they I, have those conventions? I, I, or like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Fred Astaire and Ginger Roger convention? Sure. You're like, we have a new friend of Winona Ryder, David. We could add her to the fold. That autograph session's going to be terrible, though. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I was listening. You're a theater kid. I'm yeah. also a theater kid. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey. We'll talk some Anthony Nartot later. Okay, great. I'll Brecht if you Brecht. <laughs> Classic Brecht doll. Yeah. <laughs> Does it feel like, I mean, nowadays, given the saturation of franchises in our world, is it sort of like, I mean, do you go up for stuff like prior to Creature Commandos that fits in this land? Have you been on superhero kind of adjacent auditions or no? No. David was like, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> and I was like, I auditioned for this. And they gave it to me. But I normally don't go out for stuff like this. And I'm, I, yeah, so confused, you know, with this, why I'm confused. But I'm really happy to be here. And I'm excited to learn about, I love learning. So I'm going to learn so much about this world. This, yeah. That's it, yeah, go ahead, give it up. Learning. She needs some support. She's feeling out of place. Thank give you. it up for Thank the you. theater kids. <laughs> the lonely, funny. scared theater kids, Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about the show, because I was telling you both, I think, um, I've seen a bunch of episodes. This show rocks. Creature Commandos, for those that don't know, this is from Max. It's coming in December. Uh, it's James Gunn, and it's James Gunn's first new part of this, his DC universe. And let's put the image up on the screen. Uh, this is going to give you a sense of the characters. Uh, awesome. It's kind of a misfit group of characters. You are two of them. You're, I believe, you're Nina Mazursky? I am. Awkward. The woman with the helmet on. Water tank helmet. Fish woman with the water tank helmet. That's right. <laughs> and you can guess who I am. <laughs> the enormous green angry guy. <laughs> what can you say to tease the audience a little bit about what the show is like and what your characters are like? What can we say, guys? Hmm. Well, we're a special ops, you know, uh, team. We're Task Force M. This is where like, I'm like, get all the facts out. Um, talking points, talking yeah, points. Yeah, talking points. Uh, Task Force M right. for monsters. Yeah. Uh, we do all the work that humans won't do. Right. We're the last resort. Um, and I play, yeah, Nina Mazursky, who is uh, an amphibious scientist and must always be submerged in water. <laughs> and she has a big heart. As most people submerged in water too. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. And, yeah, they need it. You see, you get it? Something about the saline. I don't know. I'm know. going for something here. Osmosis. I don't know. I failed I biology. A bunch of biology. Yeah, exactly. Work. Mitochondria. <laughs> and <laughs> Frankenstein. Eric Frankenstein, to be precise. I play Eric Frankenstein, who is the monster, Frankenstein's monster. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's a great take on the Frankenstein thing. I'm obsessed with Frankenstein. I love Frankenstein in so many different iterations. And this is great because you get Frankenstein and you also get his bride, which I don't know if you're aware of the iteration of that story of which we do some semblance of it. It's like Frankenstein's very lonely because he's the only, like, created man who isn't, and women don't like him. And he needs a bride because everyone should have a partner. And he creates one. And then, of course, it's not all that it's chalked up to be. And uh, it's fantastic that in the midst of this, like, weird, angry, you know, team of heroes, you also have an anti-rom-com <laughs> between two monsters. What, what do you two theater kids look like when you're delivering these heartfelt performances in the VO booth? Do you go full, like, if I had a camera trained on you, how, how in it are you, Zoe? David. Yeah, I do a lot of ha hum ha hum -ha. Do you remember Is that those? like a warm-up? or is that... <laughs> You didn't learn that in theater school? No, I did, but I, did. I don't do those warm-ups in the thing. Wow. What are your You're vocal warm-ups? Do you have any? I smoke a cigarette. Yep. 
Oh, you're a real theater kid. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, no, I mean, I guess, it, yeah, it's a lot of me being uh, confused. I guess <laughs> that's mostly the state I'm in. But um, I don't, it's fun to throw your body into things and not be worried about what it looks like. Um, and it was really fun. I got to work with Indira Varma, who plays the bride. And she, well, she was in London and I was in New York. And um, yeah, to f figure out what the relationship was in real time was thrilling. And, um, but it was athletic. I don't know, because you know, you're doing a lot of like, uh, uh, uh. Um, so I was like really sweaty. I, uh, I'm going to tell you, because I actually have ADR, additional recording for Creature Commandos tomorrow. <laughs> and I have a spoiler for you. I'm going to give you my lines for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Time code, one through three, line 36.2, episode <laughs> 107. Shot impact. Yeah. <laughs> 157. Falling scream. <laughs> I had to do um, gurgling, like uh, last breaths and... and breathing in air, but needing water. Did you put water in your mouth while you did it? No. I, yeah, I did try that. It got very wet. Yeah. I also had to do baby. Oh, how does that go? <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you she was good. <laughs> More of that coming in December on Max, guys. Creature Commandos. <laughs> um... The show is honestly great. I mean that. Um, we share a mutual, uh, Zoe. Ben Schwartz wanted to send you a little message and greeting. A regular unhappy, sad, confused. Oh. Shall we take a look, Zoe? You've bled us. Here he is, Ben Schwartz, everybody. Take a look. Hi, everybody. Ben Schwartz here. First off, let me say happy 10th anniversary to Josh Horowitz, a man who has been doing this for a very long time. I believe his first gig was he was on the carpet for Ben-Hur. So congratulations, Josh Horowitz, on 10 years of podcasting and 150 years of standing on carpets and absolutely pushing microphones into people's faces. And then I have a question for Zoe Chow. First off, Zoe, hi. I think you're the best. Love acting with you. My question is, when did your love affair with Doritos begin? And how has that love affair evolved throughout the years? Thank you so much. And again, congratulations to Josh Horowitz who interviewed the train in that first motion picture where the train is moving towards the camera. Congratulations. You're a thousand years old. Uh, oh my God. Funny man. Um, the train was a great interview, by the way. Um, what's the deal with the Doritos? What's, what's going on? I love them. It is uh, my only consistent practice in life, is eating them. I think they're a perfect product. Um, I have e <gasps> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Cool Ranch too, if you prefer. Okay, so you know what I do before, my ritual before flying um, is I buy both, and then I mix them in a, in a bag. Um, <laughs> and then I breathe on everyone in the plane. <laughs> and I come out with so many friends at the yeah, end of that obviously. flight. You know what's crazy is Doritos follows me on Instagram. You've made it. This is the goal. You're living the they dream. They follow only 99 <laughs> people. What? And they sent me um, Dorito nacho flavored uh, Vodka or um, what? A liquor over the holidays, and I made my entire family try it, and it's heinous. But I, I really believe in this, this, yeah, this chip. Wow. And it stayed with me: lower school, middle school, high school, college, grad wow. school, uh, to today. My first <laughs> New York Comic Con. Wow. With my buddies. You don't like them? What's, David, what's, what's your food? What's your rider food? What do you say, like, I need this. This would make me happy in the trailer. This, this, puts, this is the key to I mean, happiness. Yeah, it's just coffee and a pack of cigarettes. That's what <laughs> Wait, what kind of cigs are we talking? I roll my own, but... Whoa. 
theater kid. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> don't smoke, kids. Do you, and you really don't partake in Doritos. Those are so gross. <laughs> That, you know, the thing when you eat those, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's like smoking. Like, it's good for you, and it's horrible for everyone else. Yeah. Those are like, they give you fart breath. <laughs> like, it smells like your mouth is farting after you eat those. Sure. <laughs> Not all relationships are healthy. <laughs> Let her have her Doritos, man. Come on. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are you scared by? Because for me, I've got a few, right? I'm scared of flying, I'm scared of spiders. I've got a list, we all have a list. The good thing about this time of year, I guess, is that Halloween lets us have fun with what scares us. But what about those fears that don't involve zombies and ghosts? Therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Because sometimes the scariest thing is actually not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. I've certainly benefited from therapy and friends and family have too, and that's why BetterHelp is such an important sponsor of Happy, Sad, Confused. Therapy can help you deal with those fears and those challenges in everyday life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It is designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your very busy schedule. All you have to do, they make it so easy, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. Plus you can switch to your therapist at any time for no additional charges. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash HSC today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash HSC. Before we bring out our next guest, a little piece of tape to show you guys. Um, we have had so many, we've had over 550 guests on Happy, Sick, Confused over the last 10 years. Uh, a few of them sent in some lovely happy anniversary 10 year greetings to us and we want to share some with all of you. Uh, take a look at this 10 year tape of Happy, Sick, Confused with some of our favorites. Here you go. Josh Horowitz, you skanky son of a bitch. Oh, happy, sad, confused. I'm very happy to say happy anniversary. Happy 10 year anniversary to the happy, sad, confused podcast. From Glenn, Glenn, and Glenn. Happy, sad, confused. Happy 10th birthday. You're 10 years old. You're a big boy now. I'm a bit sad because I'm not with you celebrating, Josh, and I'm very confused that it's already been 10 years. 10 years? It's crazy. 10 years of happy, sad, confused. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's been 50. Wow, it's been a decade. Who'd have thunk it? Not many of us, if we're being honest. It's one of those things that just keeps going on. But somehow, you've managed to get all the way to the middle. Happy anniversary to Happy, Sad, Confused, a podcast that I've never listened to. I adore Josh Horowitz, everybody's favorite person to be interviewed by. You're one of my favorite people to talk to. It's the best. I loved being on it. Oh, I can't remember when I did it. Each of the segments I've done for your show have left me happy, sad, and confused. So confused? I'm still sad, confused. And you know what? We're all better for it. We've come so far together. We've laughed. We've cried. Congratulations! Congratulations! Happy, <laughs> sad, confused. I never thought we'd be married this long, but God, do I love it. You're warm. Embrace. Thank you for doing this time and time again and leaving us with a smile and a big heart. So happy birthday, happy sack, confused. Congratulations. Here's to many more years. We love you. Mwah. Love you, pal. Love you, man. So well deserved. Happy birthday. What a privilege. What an honor. What a podcast. Amazing. What? <laughs> what was that? So <laughs> oh, sweet. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. Um, I'm lucky up until this point because, unfortunately, legally speaking, I have to introduce this next guest. He is hes my genetic twin. He's my best friend. He's my greatest enemy. He's the star of the show called Outlander, whatever. Um, say hello to Sam Hewen, everybody. Come on out, Sam. Hi. Oh my God, what have I done? 
No. Can you get that on the camera? Just no. A little uh, dummy on the back? You want one? You want one? You want one? Wow. Wow. What a horrible mistake I've made. <laughs> That's $20 per shirt. But yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pay you back. That's great. You, you found literally the worst photo of me ever. How long have we got? We're cutting it short. <laughs> Thank you, sorry about that. That's, that's all I've got, that's the one joke. Sam Hewen prop comic, everybody. So happy. Don't wear it too low, please. <laughs> no, I, we are really gonna run. Ah! Yeah. Keep it up, keep it. I guess. Show. It's a kid's show. That's, oh, gonna, that's a keepsake on eBay. Congratulations. Uh, Sam, thank you for being here. Hi, buddy. It's good to see you. I missed you. <laughs> I'm going to wear this all the time. Oh, so my I'm God. Near you. I'm you so got them printed. Yeah. Do you know you I designed this that myself? Design. I can tell. Yeah. I designed yeah. it, <laughs> and I, I ordered one for all of us on, on stage. And right. you know, there was supposed to be five or six, and, and I've got 25. So. <laughs> I fucked up some of the others as well. No, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm very confused myself now. Uh, welcome back, Sam. Uh, how was, he, Sam was kind enough to come from the Outlander panel. I know a lot of you were over there. How'd it go, Sam? Um, did, you, did you win the panel? Were you the most charming? Did, who, who? It's not a competition. It's all a competition. No, it's not a competition. <laughs> Speaking of competition, well, well, we'll talk about Jamie later. The other Jamie. Yeah. Backstage, but um, there was a competition just now going on backstage. David, you don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> I think you'll beat us, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Wow, there's a team. Move on, please. Okay, okay, okay. So um, let's get some Outlander business out of the way. Have you? Sh is it over? Have you shot the end of Outlander? I want the dirt, man. Yes. Yeah. No. We have. We um, finished two weeks ago. Uh, we shot our final episode, uh, eight seasons. 101 episodes, 11 years, um, and I go back to work on Monday because we, we have to do a bunch of pickups. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a real roller coaster. I mean, we're still a long way off from right. obviously, you know, getting to you guys seeing season eight. We're just here to promote season seven, part two, or part deux. Uh, it's very similar to Hot Shots, actually, this season. Yeah. I always like a good Hot Shots part two reference. Yeah, one, my favorite, actually, of the, of the two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Top Gun parody. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, so talk to me about more of a Rambo parody now that I think about the sequel. Do you remember the sequel? It's like more of a Rambo parody than the Top Gun thing. Oh, yeah, it Chaos. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my favorite scene was when they're cooking eggs on her stomach, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which I've always wanted to do with you. Um, I have no follow-up. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so... I guess you haven't gotten emotional yet because there are pickups to come. You haven't had like the big cathartic goodbye yet because it's a long goodbye. It's, as you said, 7B is about to come out. We're going to be talking for two more years probably about it. I'm going to see you for another two years. <laughs> um, no, Just, honestly, it's, it's actually interesting talking to you guys and, and uh, the guys backstage because a lot of us have been on shows for uh, like a, a long time. And um, yeah, there's, there's so, much, so much bittersweet emotions mixed up in this from you know, saying goodbye to obviously the character, to the location, but also your family, uh, your fellow colleagues and, and the crew. So, um, and every, every time we did something, we were thinking, this is probably the last time we're gonna right. do this. It's exhausting, because you keep <laughs> saying goodbye to people. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. There's a still a long way to go, and still so much to look forward to, obviously, with season seven, part two, and eight as well. So when are we getting you into the voiceover world? We're talking about them doing animated Creature yes. Commandos. Have you ever done any voice work, really? I have, and, and you guys, so I did a comic, uh, no, I did uh, Lego villains. Um, and one of the noises I found really difficult to do uh, was electrocution. Oh, I bet you've got a good one. No, no, no. That's Go on. all you. David, no. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell. You it's just a red. first stab, <laughs> guys. I want to work on it and come back. <laughs> I can do better. I can do better. Right? That's the actor's instinct. Like, yeah, I just want to, I, I, just let me work on it for a couple days. I'll come back. <laughs> just let me come back. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling off today. I just don't, I don't have access to it. So what's the dream uh, further voiceover role? Do you want a Pixar movie? Do you want Outlander the cartoon? What do you want? <laughs> 
I'm, well, I'm a Star Trek fan, actually. I am a Star Trek fan. Um, grew up watching Next Gen, so maybe Below Decks is uh, Oh yeah. There. Come on, guys. Give yeah, we're, we'll, get, we'll get them out in a second. We'll talk some Star Trek. Amazing. Yeah. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. A few photos. Um, David, you thought you've done some silly stuff with me. Sam. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, first image I think we have. This is the famous couples uh, sketch that we did. Can we see that? Yeah. Wow. As I recall, you kind of improvised the part of involving me in the thruple. That kind of was like a Sam note. Y you know, we'd been through every kind of therapy, and that's, <laughs> that was the next step. Um, right. Yeah. And you're, the look on your face there as well. It's, yeah. That, no acting required. No acting required. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is a bad idea is to go to a gym with Sam Hewen. This was a bad idea. That's true to scale as well. That is actually how small you are. Yeah, I've never it's felt perspective at all. more like an overweight child yeah, than standing next to Sam Hewen. <laughs> well, well, talking of like 10 year anniversary, you must have started this when you were like five years old. I was, I was a prodigy. I was six years old. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do puberty yet. Uh, this was the time, this was a sweet time. We shared a milkshake once. You remember that? Yeah. That was that. a happy time. And we had these lovely matching Lunch boxes, yeah. Yeah. And then that time I surprised you by going all the way over to London. Do you remember this? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I never got you back for that. Actually. No, you didn't. Well, you kind of just did by having the ugliest T-shirt of me made ever. It's this guy. This guy. Yeah, we got it. This got guy. It. Remember who you're talking to. Yeah. So that was a legitimate surprise because I don't believe that. That was really... It was, we were, I think, doing press. They said there's this thing they would like us to do, come downstairs, and I was expecting, I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, some, some special award for being brilliant. But uh, instead, yeah, I was That awarded. would never happen. That's not gonna, that's, that's not real. No, it's never gonna happen. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was surprised by this, as you said, uh, overweight ch child. <laughs> Are you jumping out from behind a chair? That's. That's me moving as fast as I possibly can. That's in mid <laughs> And I'm almost about to hit him, I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love this scene in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. yes. I bet Sam would want to be in Lord of the Rings. You strike me as a Tolkien guy. Yeah? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, a little bit, yeah. So my, my, my brother was named after an elf. <laughs> that felt like a confessional. That felt like started. a... Mystic. It makes sense, though, man. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you got like an elven thing. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take Maybe, that. Maybe, yeah, you could Long, always... Sort of ethereal, kind of larger than, uh, like, you probably lived like 2,000 years or something. I, I, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd honestly love it. <laughs> I did audition for The Hobbit. I met Peter Jackson, and I was terrible. Um, and it was to play an elf. But um, my brother was named after an elf called Kierden, and actually, my father, apparently, my family, didn't call me Sam. They called me Sam Weiss. Um, so, yeah. And then I was very lucky. I was shooting Men in Kilts, this travel show I, I created. Down in New Zealand, we went to Weta, and I got done up as a dwarf. Uh, and I realized as soon as I put the nose on, I, I transformed. Um, and we called my dwarf, there's obviously Gloin, Droin, and we called mine Groin, the dwarf. Uh, and he was very abusive and had uh, a lot of bad language, but um, a lot of fun. Should, no. Should try playing a dwarf. Honestly. Yeah, could you imagine... Life-changing. Could you imagine either of you being in Middle Earth? Do you feel you would fit in that? Now that you're in the, suit, the comic book world, Zoe, all bets are off. You can do Fast and Furious. You can do Mission Impossible. I am do, ready. So you're ready. Yes, after this sesh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? You'd make a great... <laughs> that you're ready? <laughs> yes. Please tell me I'm ready. I think you're ready. I think so. She's ready, everybody. Right. Hook her up. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're, you're killing it. Thank I know you. you were nervous. She was backstage going like, I don't know, what do you do out there? And I was like, just act like an idiot. Yeah. You'll be fine. You yeah. Sam will show you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never going to work. See, the pretty people like it when I make fun of them. <laughs> Ask Sebastian. I have a little challenge for uh, Sam and David. Um, you both have some iconic lines as your respective characters in Stranger Things and Outlander. Here's what I want to do. I want to hear you recite each other's lines. 
So here's what's gonna happen. Oh, God. You, you, these are some Jamie Fraser wines. You're gonna, you're gonna recite as if you're Jim Hopper. I just know he's gonna do it so much better than me. Do I have to do it in an accent? What do I have to do you're, here? No, you're doing no, no, I, no, The whole no, point no, no, no. is you're a hopper. You're a hopper. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. You got this? Okay, so you're Jamie, but you're reciting some hopper wines and oh, vice versa. Okay. So you can do what comes naturally. These, the wines are just unusual. I can't even remember my accent. You can do it. Okay, so it's, David, you're hopper, but this is your line. But when I stand before God, I'll have, I'll have one thing to say to weigh against all the rest. Lord, you gave me a rare woman. God, I, I, I loved her well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, he wins the Doritos. You win the Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like spiking a football. <laughs> Doing that at the end of the show. Sam. I honestly can't remember my accent. I've, I, the, the show is over. I'm, I'm, you dropped it. No, you have reshoots. You've got to do it. I'm not going to hurt him. I'm just giving him the opportunity to get his own damn cherry slurpee. <laughs> wow. That's good. They should recast. All right. Whoa. There's three more months of filming. All right, choose, choose one more. You don't have to do both. But choose yeah. one of your choice. Time doesn't matter, Sassanach. <laughs> You'll always be beautiful to me. Wow. There's a small note there, but... It's, it's good. We can work with it. We can wait. It's a start. I don't know the pronunciation no. of one of those we, words. We know. We know, David. <laughs> I, I missed that season. <laughs> Sassanach. Yeah, uh, you've just destroyed my whole whiskey industry. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fun game. <laughs> Sassenach whiskey is the best whiskey out there, by the way. It turns you into one once you're drunk <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, one more from you, Sam. <laughs> oh. Mornings are for coffee and contemplation. <laughs> it is. Well done, guys. Good job. You passed the tests. Um, all right, before we bring out our next guest, uh, we like to end the happy, sick, infused conversations with our profoundly random questions, and we get some amazing ones over the years. Uh, one of my favorites is the last actor you're mistaken for. Let's look at some of the best answers we've had over the last few years of happy, sick, infused to that question. Take a look. Are you ready for the happy, sick, infused, profoundly random questionnaire? Yeah, go. What, what was that? What just happened? Oh, it was like the little, a little shimmy. shimmy. You do shimmy. Yeah, yeah, shimmy. Yeah. Well, it's better than your last question, so it's kind of fun. Last actor you were mistaken for. Has that ever happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it happens a lot. I just had this happen to me. I get Anne Hathaway a lot. It's always Bill Mill. Kevin Sawa. Chris Evans, Chris Evans, Chris Pratt. Kurt Russell, we get it sometimes. Sophia DiMartino. I get a lot of, you look a lot like the girl from Euphoria, and I'm like, really? Huh. Nice. Myself. Sometimes people will be in the street and be like, hey, are you Andrew Garfield? I'll be like, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, people say my name wrong. McCovey? McCavey? What's the go-to worst pronunciation? Mary Louise Parker. Well, that's, <laughs> those hyphens really screw people hyphens up. Hyphens are trouble, yeah. Yeah. Gerard Butler. Is Jerry? <laughs> yeah. Is Ewan? You know, you look like the actor Ewan McGregor. I've signed pictures of him. That's a collectible. This guy goes, will you sign this? I was like, that's not me. Right. Wait, who is this? Oh, no. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Felicity Jones. <laughs> and he's like, can you sign it anyway? I'm like, no, I'm not defacing Felicity's face. It's like, it's, yeah. I die for chapel. I live for chapel. <laughs> Apparently, everyone says to her that I am her celebrity lookalike. Congratulations. That's what I'm living off of right now. It's like my oxygen right now. Matt Damon. Oh, jo Joey Lawrence. I'm Joe Quinn. You get Joe, Joe Quinn? Quinn? Last actor you were mistaken for? <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hair. It's the, it's hair. the hair. Yeah. Tom Hardy. <laughs> really? Honestly, I got that. I was like, wow. 
the Jesse Plemons. I'm quite tempted not to correct people. He's so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, George Hamilton, which was really George, great. George Hamilton. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. George Hamilton. Shows you how well I'm aging. It's funny. I saw the clip of Bill Hader uh, saying that he was mistaken for me. Because Paul came up to you and goes, I love the boys. And then he got, and then he went like this. Oh, wait. Never mind. <laughs> oh, shit. Never mind. Oh, God. Yikes. Throughout that whole clip, he's just like, that guy works out. <laughs> that guy is in shape. I don't know. That's awesome, you know. Yeah, that's a great compliment to him that he looks like me, because that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Most recently, Jeff Daniels. And somebody was like, oh my God, oh my God, I love the newsroom. And then I texted Jeff, I was like, somebody just thought I was you, and he said, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening in my life. No one knows who I am. They think I'm Jeff Daniels. Oh, and then another one, it was like, isn't, isn't that the motherfucker from Scooby-Doo? Isn't that Shaggy? <laughs> Amazing. Any any other recent ones? Any anyone else have any others to offer that have happened recently or or no? I, I, I was working in Budapest a couple of years ago, and I went to this gym, and the, the owner there he was very excited to have me in there. He's like, I like your movies. I like your movies. That's not his accent, but he's like your movies. And he kept bringing me into the gym, and then one day he went in. And he said, Come, come, come. And I went into the changing rooms. It's you. I like your movie, Tarzan. And uh, he had a big mural of me on his wall uh, with Skarsgård written beneath it. <laughs> I mean... I mean, that's a pretty good one to be compared I would say. to. Yeah. That's no Jeff I Daniels wish. at full-on 65, all right? <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise all the time, but in his prime. <laughs> and then Brad Pitt, it's annoying. No, I do get... You know what I get a lot nowadays? I don't know if it's that people are afraid to commit or something. But I swear to God, I get this all the time where people are like, you look just like David Harbour. And I go, really? I go, is that, is that a good thing? And they're like, it's okay. You look, but they go like, you look just like him. And I go, yeah, I know, people say that. No, 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 really, you look just like him. I'm like, I know. And I swear I've gotten that like five times this week alone in New York. And you're just like, just maybe I'm him, him. Your David Harbour cosplay is off I the know, charts, off man. The, people really don't want to believe that I'm him. I got to pull out my ID. It's embarrassing. We did a DNA like, test backstage. my driver's license. I swear to God. They're like, no, but you look like him. <laughs> he couldn't I, be in the Starbucks. David Harbour wouldn't be in a Starbucks. I'm totally in your Starbucks. I'm telling you. I'm in your Starbucks. I'm on your subway. I'm walking down your street talking to He's myself. He's a man of the people. I'm that guy. <laughs> Smoking a cig. Theater kid. He's rolling his own cigarettes on the subway. That, and not eating Doritos. <laughs> Get those Doritos away from me. See me with a Dorito bag, it's not me. <laughs> I used to get, in college, I, had, I would get Mandy Moore a yes. lot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Really? Yes, yes. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm missing no, really. you yes. in <laughs> And I, I thought I would, I thought it'd be funny to make my college Facebook profile uh, a picture that did look like both of us, but then it backfired and um, friends from high school wrote comments like, you've never looked better. <laughs> wow, you've really blossomed. Amazing. Well, you saw this next guest on that video he, he might as well be the king of Comic-Con. Let, let me list some of the credits here. Jack Quaid has, is the star of Scream, Star Trek Lower Decks, The Boys, My Adventures with Superman. He's living the nerd dream, everybody. Give it up for Jack Quaid, everybody! Uh, hey, hey, Josh. Jack. Um, Hold on. What, what? Hey, so Josh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me, Josh? Yeah, yeah we can. Hey, um, we can hear you. Yeah, what's up? Do I have to come out? Uh, yeah, that's the whole point. I mean, it, okay. The visual... I, I just think, um, I think I might have, like, misread the email or something, because I, 
I made a bit of a, just a bit of a mistake. No, no, don't um, overthink it, man. I'm sure whatever, it's, it's fine. Oh, okay. It's well, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're probably going to laugh. No one's going to, hey, God, we're not going to laugh, right? It's Jack Quinn. We're excited to see well, him, guys, right, hey, everybody? Yeah. In, entire audience, do you promise not to laugh? We promise. No yeah, one's going to laugh. Okay. All right. No, we, we won't laugh, honestly. There he is. Okay. See my All right. t-shirt? All right, here I come. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's Jack Quaid. Come on out. Hi. Hi, everybody. How's it going? <clears throat> What, uh, what, what, what's up, Jack? So, what's so what I think happened was, um, so I don't, I don't really read too much into my emails, you know, and I think I just saw David's name, and I just, I, mean, I thought maybe this was like a Stranger Things panel. No. Right, right. It's, it's a, not, right? It's not, no, it's, okay. a, it's the 10th anniversary of the podcast. David is here. Oh, sick. I'm hey, man. here, yeah. It oh, is. dude. It is David, right? Dude, Jesus hey, Christ. It's, it's so good to meet you, man. Hey, man. What's oh, up? Nice dude, to meet you're you. Thanks like, for coming. You're fucking the best, dude. All right, cool. Season, like, season five, really, the last season? Yeah, yeah, last oh, season. Oh, man, well, shit. Is there a hell of fingers you no, got? No, man. Well. I mean, you know, you deal with these things all the time. Ah, Jesus you Christ. So this uh, is... This is uh, so stylish with yeah. the shoes, though. Oh, no, yeah. You got to wear... Very good choice. That's what they wear on the show, right? Brown, brown loafers. Does this bring you back, David? Is this like the Demogorgon on set? You know, season one, we did have a guy who walked around like this. <laughs> okay. In like a rubber suit. Looked yeah. almost exactly like that. Oh, sick. Yeah, no, they're always... Oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you he have has a, a SAG award, that guy. Oh, sweet. I don't, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Well... I mean, you're here anyway. You want to stick around? I'll, yeah, sure. I'll stick around. Yeah, hey, cool. Thanks, hey. Man. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Jack Quaid. Up, hey. Yeah, good yeah. Oh, my God, hi. Fucking love Doritos, too, bro. It's <laughs> fucking great. Awesome. awesome. You, you want one? Uh, or, you, or you can't? You, the... Oh, yeah, you know, I'll, yeah, probably, probably should take this off at least. Okay. There he is. Hi. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. What's up? Hey, oh, sick. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Wow. You just can't grip anything. That's crazy. <laughs> so... Thanks for having me. Well, the good news is you have a Halloween costume now. You yeah, can, you can, great. You can Yeah. That. No, it's going to be so sick. Everyone's going to be like, <laughs> you're the guy. Yeah. Yeah. You are the guy, though. Oh, I just listed man. all the credits, Jack. Uh, you're living truly the nerd dream come true. All yeah, these amazing kind of shows. Yeah, thank you. I feel very, very lucky. And thanks to all of you for being here for Josh. This is insane. Also, <laughs> I was signing today. Some of you came through. You guys are so, so cool. Thank you for having me. You're wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> that makes a sound, yeah? Yeah, we hear that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So not to make you rank all the amazing franchises you've been a part of, but what makes your inner geek most lose their mind? What are oh, you part man. of that? Oh, God, I, I kind of have to bring it back to... I think I have to bring it back to the boys because for so long... Thanks, y'all. For so long, I was like such a superhero nerd, and I was like, oh my god, I'd love to be in you know, a Marvel, DC movie, something like that someday. The fingers are distracting, I'm now realizing. <laughs> oh, um, we love it. Uh, I can grip the Doritos. <laughs> it's, it, the sound of that is amazing. <laughs> no, but I just was, always wanted to be in something nerdy and something involving superheroes, and then like never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd you know, be at like, ground zero for this whole franchise. And, you know, especially with how absolutely deranged our show is. I remember being at New York Comic Con, like, before the show came out. No one knew anything about it. They're like, why is it called The Boys? This doesn't make any sense. And we had to kind of explain the show. And I was kind of like, are people going to respond to this? And you guys have been absolutely incredible. So thank you for watching. Uh, the show is amazing. I feel like a, a, a theme uh, in tonight's conversation is endings because we do know the boys yeah. is coming to an end. Yeah. Do you? You haven't started. Whoa. Whoa. It wasn't a boo. It was a whoa. I don't know about this. Um, you haven't started shooting the end yet, but no, no, you, that'll you, be in about a month. We're all gonna head up to Toronto and and finish this thing. It's gonna be it's gonna be very bittersweet. But I'm just really excited that we're, you know, we get to go out on our own terms. You know, like this is the, the ending that, the, that Eric Kripke and our writers intended. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be rushed. It's going to feel very 
final. It's gonna be great. Have you made any requests for Huey before this all ends? I need to do this. I need oh to share man. Some I think I just want nudity to stop. <laughs> uh, my butt's had a lot of screen time, and it's not a great one. You know what I mean? And I think we don't need to. Yeah, you and Sam could talk. Maybe. Don't you yeah, fucking could... dare. <laughs> don't you dare. No, it's. You see how ripped I am right now? Look at this. That's all chest. Hell yeah. <laughs> time to dig into those Doritos, pal. Yeah, I'm waiting. Open it's, it's time. It's shame, about time. Eat, eat, eat the shame away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't want to open these. They will fall. This is the <laughs> slickest surface of all time. It will be a, just a pool of Doritos. Yeah. Dive on in. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Give, given what you've just talked about, do friends and family watch the show? Do you give them a heads up? Do you say, like, maybe skip this episode? We're, we're, we're cool here. Oh, um, yes, no, I definitely have anything involving my ass. I've just been like, can right. you just not watch? I mean, season three, you just don't watch it. Like, <laughs> no one in my family should watch season three. My butt's all over that thing. Um, but yeah, I'm actually, well, you, you brought up families. I'm actually very uh, surprised at how many people come up to my table when I do a con, and it's an entire family, including children. They're like, we love the show, all of us. We watch it, and I'm like, that's a baby. And they're like, yeah, they got to learn. Um, and, uh, but thank you for watching, entire family. I have questions, but I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Same question for you, Sam. Friends and family, do you give them heads I've up? I've seen his butt, yeah. I mean, I've yeah. seen it. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, it's good. <laughs> and? Well, can I get it signed? Like the, okay. okay, later. We'll go backstage. Yeah. Yeah. David, is your butt? Yeah, how's your butt? Yeah. Was it? No, the only thing, what do I do? I usually take my shirt off each season, and the more voluptuous I am, the greater the response. <laughs> Which is like a lovely gesture, audiences. Yeah. You guys want me on that full half and half diet. <laughs> Just a nice warm glass of half and half and a two dozen donuts, David, <laughs> a day. That's all we ask. It does feel like Red Guardian's costume doesn't leave much to be to the imagination. It's, it's, it accentuates every aspect of the body. Do you enjoy, yeah, feel you like know flattered what? It's by fly, it? It's crazy though, it is crazy because you know, the, the great thing about you do a Marvel movie and the first thing everybody does on a Marvel set, and there's a guy down in Atlanta who's like the trainer for like the everybody Marvel, and so everybody's like, all right, we're gonna train. And like everybody just starts training and lifting. You understand this, Sam, right? We lift weights and we do things and stuff, right? And then they're always like, except David. <laughs> like, he can lift weights. We're fine with that. It's true. Like, in Thunderbolts, like, but they're like, please don't lose that adorable dad belly. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, you've given me all the tools to get in shape. And you're saying, don't use them. It's kind of the dream. I don't know. Um, yeah, Let's put up the QR code again just for audience questions, just to remind you folks how to submit your questions. We'll put it up on the big screen if we could. Thank you. Um, we also should mention Star Trek Lower Decks. We talked Star Trek oh, thank a little you very bit much. earlier. And by the way, this is the last season of Lower Decks, nice. but we would have loved to have you. What the <laughs> fuck? I didn't know you watched the we show. We were so close. It's unbelievable. That's so cool. Man. Oh, thank oh. you, dude. Oh, yeah. But yeah, hey, let's get renewed. Let's do this. Let's keep going. <laughs> let's get them on. Let's do it. Isn't, isn't William Shatner a big Outlander fan? I feel like he's... Uh, yeah. I hung out with him once. We went to stables and I watched him like riding a horse and stuff. And I don't know, it was really weird because sometimes I wonder if I'm speaking to him via messages and stuff or if it's actually his assistant. Oh. I don't know. Does his assistant look a lot like him? <laughs> <laughs> you can't, yeah, uh, you can't tell him apart. Yeah, no, but I believe he, he was uh, a fan Amazing. until he saw me ride. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be... Do you want to be a red shirt that dies? Do you want to be a captain? Do you oh, want to, what do, you, what do we cast you so as? so much to unpack, yeah. I, I, I would, I, yeah, a, a good death would be great, a red shirt, I think, but. If you had to pick a captain, like who's your favorite captain? Oh, Excellent. well, I mean, I, I'm going back to Picard, right? Oh yeah, I mean, that of was, course. Uh, my Patrick Stewart the man. was just incredible, but I love Deep Space Nine, I was, yeah. yeah. David Trekkie, Secret Trekkie, or not? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, in college, like, I just watched Next Generation nonstop. And that was back in the days when we had these things called DVDs. Yeah. 
I don't know if you remember those Next Generation DVD cases, though, but they came, like, silver, and then, like, the thing would come, stripe would come around, it would be orange for season four, or red for season three, or whatever. And, yeah, we just had those back-to-back, -back and we would just, like, try to write papers and just have that playing in the background. <laughs> just, like, I love that. Jean-Luc playing, like, five-card stud oh, stuff yeah. with his crew. I find the hum of the ship on, of the Enterprise is very <sighs> calming. Yeah. It's very nice to put on at night when you're, like, kind of drifting off to sleep. It's a very nice hum. Just that it gives off. I don't know, whatever, you know. <laughs> you haven't noticed the hum? It's a good hum. <laughs> Who's with me on the hum? Crickets, nothing. <laughs> you got a smattering of yes? <laughs> I had no idea until way too late that they did that thing on the ship where they moved their bodies oh, yeah. in the camera. Like, I had no, I was like, it must be a huge rig and like a whole thing. I also didn't know that Patty Duke played her and her identical cousin on the <laughs> Patty Duke show. <laughs> Until I was like 25. They make you believe. It's so good. It makes you the magic of movies. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. I love it. And, and Jack is not the Demogorgon. That's a different thing. That's I know, I know. Magic. But uh, Jack Quaid is before you now. Uh, <laughs> not the Demogorgon. Isn't he always? Yes, yes, of It's course. a master class. It's a master class in how um, to be an idiot. One more piece of tape to show before we bring out our wonderful final guest of the evening. Uh, another one of my favorite questions that we ask most guests is about the worst note they've received from a director. We've gotten some amazing responses. Uh, enjoy this compilation of the worst notes actors have, have received. Profoundly random question, Sebastian. Here we go, you this ready? Is like, this is like our modern day actor studio. What's the worst note a director has ever given you? Oh. <laughs> 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 um. The worst note. Anything that was longer than a sentence. <laughs> Someone told me to do press ups before a take. Yeah, I know, it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I did the press ups, but I didn't love it. <laughs> Just feel it. I need you to feel it. Do it less gay. Whoa! <laughs> I think when their note contradicted itself. Just just get through it faster. 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 But then they go, but deliver it slower. And it's like, okay, yeah. More energy. How do you respond to that? I die inside. Right. Right. Worst note a director has ever given you. <laughs> Silent thumbs. <laughs> because it's not a note. Be funnier. More funny. Like right. just like funnier. Not funny, more funny. And I remember going, oh God. It's all over. It's like you're conducting an orchestra, but everybody's playing different notes. What? It isn't gelling. Don't do that. That's uh, bad. Don't print it! Sorry. <laughs> well, Won't be the last time that the director thinks that, but you might be the only person who says it in those terms and respect the user. <laughs> I mean... Don't print it. That was wonderful. Now do it again and make me believe you. Did that, was that meant oh, as constructive criticism? Exactly, exactly what that? you fucking think there, man. <laughs> <laughs> and don't suck so hard. I hate it when they're like, Hey, let's talk about your dad. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get there. When a director brings you on to set and goes, so you're gonna, burp, 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 and they just read out what's on the page, and I'm like, yeah, no, I got, I've got that. I can read that. It's the context that I need. A director once asked me, "Am I a good director?" <laughs> we're the needy the ones. Yes. Get out. <laughs> get out. We're rehearsing, and we're walking down a big alleyway. But we're in a room that's smaller than this. All right, cool. We'll just stand here. Boys, cut, 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 cut. I can't watch this. It's just, it's so fake. Listen, all you need to do is on the spot, just do a bit of this. <laughs> I'm not doing this, mate. It's so silly. He was a bit of a dick. Sometimes as a director will ask you to do exactly what you just did. Again? Okay. <laughs> You're like, but we just did that, I think. What do I do now? Is it, I get a bad note or another, I don't agree. I agree. You go, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, oh, totally, great. And then you do exactly the same thing. And then they go, yeah, that was great, great. Yeah. And you're like, so you want to give them respect, but also be like, are you losing your mind? <laughs> so fun. Um, Zoe, you're a newbie. Do you have a contribution here? Worst note a director has ever given you. Oh, shoot. I mean, I, yeah, faster. Better, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I guess funnier. Yeah, what do you, that's not very specific. Oh, man, I, sorry. There's, yeah, I mean, that, I black out when that happens. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good, 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 that thing is happening, and what is the other job I'm going to do when I quit this business? <laughs> right. 
striking the commonality. Like so many of those notes, you've all heard the same thing. Like, yeah, anyway. Oh, I often, sorry, I often, sometimes it sounds like English is my second language and it's really the only language I speak. Um, and I, yeah, and I can hit the wrong, um, I can make a word that's not the operative word, the operative word sometimes. And that's not fun when right. someone has to come in and go, that's a really weird place to emphasize. Um, that's what Christopher Walken's been doing for 50 years. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, we have one more amazing guest, a returning champion to happy, sad, confused. She is Comic-Con royalty. You know from Blind Spot. You know her from, of course, she's OG Marvel. Sif is in the house. Give it up for Jamie Alexander, Woo! everybody. Come on. There she is. Hi. There she is, Jamie! Oh my gosh, all this for me? <laughs> all this for you. Oh, should I have come this way? Hi, you guys. Hello. Hello, Jamie, Hi. welcome. Oh, okay, I thought you were still wearing the headpiece. I'm disappointed, Jamie. I would have burst into flame. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> would you like these Doritos? I would, actually, thank you. Wow, the, the cast is divided, the panel's divided. David I, Harbour and all of the rest of us. Oh, they suck. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm not sharing these. I've been backstage listening to you people talk about these damn things for like an hour, and I'm starving, and I was gonna get a burger, but I'm gonna pregame with these. There you go. Yeah. Oh, it's calm. I laughed my you. own heart. Do you like them, Sam? I, I mean, yeah, I'm waiting for you to open them, Jamie, but. Uh... I'm not doing that here, you'll take it. Okay. And also, can it be, like, let's be clear, there is only one Jamie Alexander. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. So wait, what was brewing backstage? You were alluded to a competition <laughs> no. of some sort. What, what were you guys talking about? I hate you for bringing that up, by the way. What? I did nothing. You, I heard if you you're going to steal the Doritos, um, well. Jamie, the real Jamie Alexander, <laughs> uh, challenged the I, fake. No, I didn't. I did not challenge you. I was doing You it. saw Jack, no. you I, saw it. You I, didn't see, I didn't see how it started. I just saw the end, and it seemed like you both were doing a great job. <laughs> I was getting a little tired. It's really dark back there, you guys. And like, Juice, oh, I didn't have anybody sleeping. to play with. And, and I was like, I need to wake up. So I just started doing push-ups on my knuckles because that's what I do. And then, you know, He-Man over here was like, can I also? And I said, sure, but like, I already did a bunch and I can't do that many. And then, of course, in the time that I did four, he did like 456, oh, but that's fine. And uh, my friend videoed it. So... No. It exists. Uh, it doesn't make me look very good, but, you know. This is not true. Listen. Josh, Josh, I texted it to you, so you have Oh, perfect. I'm looking forward to it. You're welcome. I turn around. I saw Jamie lying on the floor. I'm a gentleman. I offered to help her up. Sure. Jack was taking his clothes off. Um, <laughs> yeah. As he does. As I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see a push-up contest. I take my clothes off. <laughs> Those are the rules. And someone opened the Doritos. We got there a party. It's like the 90s. Season three. <laughs> oh my gosh. A little healthy competition is good. I'm happy this happened tonight. Um, Jamie, you're a Comic-Con vet. I mean, talk to me about the first couple times you came to a Comic-Con, probably San Diego, I would imagine, for Thor in those early days. Did it blow oh, wow. your mind? I mean, that's gotta be an indelible yes. memory. Um, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, I, I love it here. I feel like I'm at home. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I did, to be fair, I did want to dress up in a kilt, uh, because I thought it would be hilarious, um, but I couldn't find one, so That's one word of describing. Um, <laughs> I didn't hear you, and I'm glad I didn't. It's probably for the best you're not sitting next to me, because I can, I got a good right hook. Oh. Um, so, back to Thor. <laughs> I'm so scared right now. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, stay Thank where you me. are, because otherwise yeah, there will be don't bloodshed. Move. Okay. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I love being here. It's it's really fun, and and I've I've uh, you know it's been a long road with Marvel, <clears throat> and um, but I've had a great time, and it's uh, it's you know facilitated things like this where I get to hang out with all of you guys and and your incredible costumes and your personalities and everything, and it's you guys have definitely added some spice to New York for sure. <laughs> Do you remember the first time, you must have seen cosplay over the years as your characters. That's gotta be a moment in someone's career. You don't count on that as a young actor. It's, 
It's amazing. When I first saw people dress up as Lady Sif, I actually was like, damn, their costume's better than the one I wore in the first movie. I was like, and they can move in it, what? Um, but then for Blind Spot, I had a lot of people dressing up with like the tattoos, and I really felt for you guys if you did that because they are impossible to get off. Like I would have, I had like glue on my body for like weeks. I would just pick up gnats, glass, whatever's <laughs> flying around. I'm not kidding. I would do a fight scene and, and literally be like, oh my God, like what's in there, you know? Um, but it's really cool, you guys. It's just so creative and so uh, rewarding to see that something that I enjoy doing so much makes people happy. Yeah. Like it's, huge. It's, it's a good feeling. At this point, is it a non-starter? You open a script and it says your character has tattoos. You're like, I've been there. I went to the extreme. I Hard mean, pass. Like, what more could you do? Um, <laughs> I literally, you guys, just FYI, there was not a place on my body without a tattoo. Like, the, the palms of my hands and the bottom of my feet. I literally, between the cheeks, everywhere. Like, they were everywhere. Because I couldn't, it was NBC. <laughs> They're like, we can't see anything, so we're just going to cover you with tattoos. That's right, Sam. Don't shake your head at me. Sorry, no. I'm, I'm going to a very happy place. So. Well, I mean, you know, at least I was covered with tattoos. Whoa. <laughs> Guys, please. Like, this is, I can't handle this right now. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, oh no. man, I'm not. <laughs> Tell me more about the tattoos, Jim. Oh, shit. I well, they were sticky. Um... <laughs> Listen, they were, they were, uh, it was the weirdest thing I've ever put on my body, um, which if you've seen the stuff I've done, uh, it says a lot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. I, I am yet to play a, a normal person. I just can't fucking get a job where I play a normal woman. So yeah, like most actors like dream of these extreme roles. You're like, Jamie's dream is play a lady, play a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Can she walk down the street without murdering somebody? <laughs> Nope. That's okay. It's, we'll uh, it's easy it to tonight. cover my real life. So. <laughs> exactly. Have any of you, I would imagine a few of you might have seen tattoos of your characters on people's bodies over the years. Is that... A very high stakes thing happens every now and then when I do a convention. They're like, can you sign my arm? I'm about to go to the tattoo parlor and get that, like, just, you know, they'll trace over that and create a tattoo. And that's the most amount of pressure to sign something well in the world. I'm like, I'm very flattered. Are you sure you want me on your body forever? You have to ask those questions. <laughs> she said yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We found the one. Appreciate you. She now has your signature as well, so she's <laughs> stealing your identity. I'm gonna have you all sign me tonight and get it all tattooed afterwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're down. Seems, Seems like, like a wise idea, idea, right? Then we're gonna stick Doritos to you. <laughs> uh, we do have some fan questions. Tracy loves sad. Jamie wants to know for all the guests, what is the theme song for your life? Send in the clowns. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm not fast enough for this, Sam. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, oh, oh God, Celine Dion. It's all coming back to me now. There you go. <laughs> I get knocked down by Chumbawamba. Yes. <laughs> It's oh. technically called tub thumping, but for the sake of the bit. Uh, thunderstruck ACDC. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Lizzie here for Jack. Were there any Easter egg eggs fans didn't catch from the past season of The Boys? Oh, my God. Easter eggs from the past season. We throw a lot in there. I think, like, throughout the show, um, there are these little things. Like, for fans of, like, all of Eric Kripke's... Uh, bodies of work. He puts puts in like little, you know, like the the pizza restaurant is called like Tony Cicero's. So it's like it's called Tony Cicero's and Supernatural and Timeless and all of his work. So if you look really closely, you'll see Easter eggs from like all of Eric Kripke's. Um, you can't say filmography, televisionography. There That's you go. Sure, sure. Oh yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, Jul oh, that, you guys are moving fast. Let's see. Oh, Crystal wants to know, this is a selfish one, if you could add Josh into any of your shows, who would you cast him as and why? I don't know why there's an LOL at the end of the question. That wasn't necessary. For the reboot of Stranger Things, he would be yes. the lead overweight child. <laughs> 
with a large man teaching him how to lift weights for the first time. <laughs> Son, come over here. <laughs> for the, uh, the new uh, um, Blood of My Blood, which is the prequel show, I think uh, Josh would definitely have to play my father. Yeah. Sold in the jeans, right? Yeah, yeah. I Can you it. play yourself on the boys and just interview the deep? Oh. Yeah. I just want that to happen. Now you're talking. You don't die, now don't you're... worry. <laughs> you won't up, man. Amazing. I'm not answering that. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do the one Jamie in blind spot. Oh, you, you know this question. You've heard this one. How long did it take to apply tattoos for the episodes from Kim? Okay, so legit nine hours. Um, I would to be in makeup standing. I wasn't allowed to sit or anything. So I, there's like yeah, it was, it's a puzzle. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so we would listen to, like, really inappropriate podcasts and stuff. It got weird, but, um, and then about three to four hours to take them off. You earned your paycheck on I'm that one. I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, let's do, for all from Catherine, what would be your chance for a zombie apocalypse, uh, and then it went away. Uh, chances in a zombie apocalypse, would you survive? Do you have what it takes? Zero, I ch would. zero chance. <laughs> you have no skills. I'd win, is that what you say? Absolutely. I'd I feel win. like Jamie in this group would survive the zombie Jamie, apocalypse. Jamie would, yeah. yeah. No, Don't I you have a whole arsenal of weapons? Mm, of you can't walk down the street without murdering someone. Well, yeah. Jack. We're going to go careful. to Jamie's house and survive there. I do have a lot of sh weapons at my house. Sharp, not guns, just sharp objects. <laughs> <laughs> and a hammer. I have a Thor hammer. Does that make it better? Okay. Yeah, there we go, Sam. Uh, let's, yeah, you have something, David? Or on the... I, I, I've been reading a lot of sociology recently, a lot of dark sociology. <laughs> Today, there was a gentleman on a bike who was texting, who ran into me. So I'm in the middle of the zombie apocalypse, wow. and I am trying to survive. If you are riding a bike, do not text on your phone. <laughs> In fact, let's all put them down and look at each other. <laughs> Here, here's one from Ethan for you, David. How is filming Thunderbolts and Stranger Things at the same time? Did you have to do How is it what? Filming Thunderbolts? Both at the same time. Is that kind of schizophrenic to kind of uh, one to the other? Or yeah, what? they actually kind of worked it out there where I could just do Thunderbolts for two weeks. But um, uh, I, I do, you know, I did have to justify, because the beard is sort of uh, Red Guardian. And, uh, and so I did have to work through a big justification of why Hopper grew this insane beard this season, but you'll see it in my face. You'll understand when you see it. Can't wait to see you electrocuted. We've seen the sneak preview of that already. Um, I'm gonna introduce some, uh, as we wrap up, some new happy, sad, confused, profoundly random questions that we've never done. I'm gonna try these out and see if they work. Uh, strangest thing any of you have ever done to prepare for a role? Something jump out, an extreme length you went for, maybe it was an audition, maybe it was the actual role, that in retrospect seems, what was I thinking? Mm, I can, well, okay. The first Thor, I went in to see Kevin Feige, and I had my purse, and I happened to carry a knife, and I, uh, it was also that Checks time out. of the month. No, yeah. it gets worse. Um, and I, my purse fell off the chair and there was a tampon and a knife and like all this stuff. <laughs> and then, and then somehow it came up that I have four brothers. And so they were basically like, so, okay, you're Sif. So there you go. So I really, it was just, I was myself. <laughs> <laughs> Tag your it, Jack. Oh, oh shit. Um, I had to learn how to play the bongos for yes. Oppenheimer, <laughs> which is the thing I never thought I'd say in my life. Um, uh, David Krumholtz is in that movie. He plays the bongos for not one, but two Grateful Dead cover bands. And yeah, he rules. And he would give me like bongo lessons in the lobby of our hotel. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm the, the greatest bongist who ever lived, but <laughs> um, you know, I'm getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. Yeah. We can go to the next unless anybody else has anything. I, I mean, I, a long time, at the start of my career, I had to audition for the monkeys. Uh, remake of the, the, the musical show, and uh, I can't sing, I can't dance, <laughs> and I can't play the guitar. I went out and bought a guitar, I traveled down to London, and I walked into the audition, and then they said, do your piece. Yeah, that, you can see how that went, right. Yeah. Wow, they were doing a new Monkeys. That's, that's the shocking part of that story, that's crazy. 
Right. Uh, <laughs> is there an actor that you're convinced you would vibe with on screen? And in your heart of hearts, you're like, I see that actor one day. We're going to click. It, make, it makes sense. I thought me and Jamie would, but... <laughs> <laughs> that dream died tonight. Well, I mean, you know, we could. <laughs> I love that nobody answered that. We're like, no. I feel like I've been song. blabbing. I don't know about you guys. God, I mean, I I love I love Will Ferrell, and I would love to do a movie oh, with Will Ferrell. That seems like a no-brainer. Do any of you have a recurring dream or nightmare that has popped up in your life? Living it now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a nightmare from when I used to serve when I was a, a waitress. Um, I still worry about a burger that I did not fire for table 42. <laughs> and they're still waiting for it, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you have like anxiety dreams like during or before work, before a job? Is that? All the time. <laughs> I have a thing, I'm sure you guys have had it too, where uh, I'm going to bed after a long day of work. It is completely silent in my room, but I, my brain still hears the, the rhythm of the set. Like you hear kind of just voices that don't say anything, but they're just kind of like. <laughs> and I just, that will just kind of play as I'm trying to fall asleep. And it is uh, probably a form of schizophrenia if I'm thinking about it, but it's great. There's the, I have the classic actor's nightmare. Do you guys have that one? Like, oh, there's a classic actor's nightmare where you're backstage, you're, you're about to do a play, and you don't know any of your lines or what the play is, and you're not wearing any pants. <laughs> and I have that literal nightmare all the time. And the stage manager is like, go, 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 go. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hello. And then I wake up in a sweat. Maybe. I had that dream until I had to actually go on stage with no pants. And then that's <laughs> <laughs> like, nightmare, that's my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a line in your career that you had to utter that was so cumbersome, so insane, you will never forget it because you had to put so much work into remembering this techno babble, this bizarre whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did this show when I was like 22 called Kyle XY. And, and my character, for some reason, had to give the Latin term for every fucking disease. So it was like Staphylococcus aureus and like all this stuff. And I, you know, I grew up in Texas. So I don't know how to say that. <laughs> it was just terrible. Somebody else speak, please. <laughs> I did a, uh, I did kind of the opposite of that. Like I did this movie called Gran Turismo last year that, um, uh, and it was like, it's one of these parts where a, there's a lot of time spent, you know, he's talking to the driver. So it was me and this great actor, Archie. Um, and so there's just a ton of coverage of just me like staring at a screen going like, you know, uh, and they had like nothing written. <laughs> so it was just me going like, coming around that turn, come around that turn. Make that turn, make sure you get around that turn. Make the car go around the track. Get it on the straightaway, now go fast. <laughs> Sounds like I had to make up like tons of shit. That's a nightmare. And it, was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Eat those Doritos, go get those Doritos. <laughs> like I wish I had technical stuff to say and instead it was just David Arbor trying to be a race car driver. <laughs> Um, if you can believe it, guys, we're careening towards the end. This has been such a special night. I know! Um, a few things to mention before we go. I do want to plug some uh, of the projects we discussed here tonight. Creature Commandos, check it out. It's amazing. It's on Max in December. Uh, Night Bitch, we didn't even mention also, is a great film that Zoe's in coming out very soon. Outlander, of course. Sassanac Spirits, of course. Star Trek Lower Decks, of course. We're gonna cast Jamie as a normal damn human being one of these days. One of these days. We're gonna manifest it. Before we go, I do have some gifts because we have a tradition at Happy Sad Confused. When you are on the show for five times, you get a freaking hat, guys. And there, we have two five-timers tonight. Here we go, guys. Five-timer club member, David Harbour, everybody! Wow. 
I had no idea. I want to thank uh, Josh. <laughs> I want to thank all of you. Sorry. Five Timer Club, Sam Hewen, everybody! Oh. <laughs> Hell yes. And look, I couldn't let everybody feel left out. So, Two Timer Club member, Jack Quaid, everybody! Hey. Yeah! Thank you very much, America. <laughs> Two Timer Club member, Jamie Alexander. This is so everybody. normal. And the very rare One Timer Club member hat to Zoe Chow, everybody. Woo! Congratulations. Um, look at you. You're all beautiful. Look at you. Amazing. My dream has come true. Welcome to our this cult. Is, this is the new fashion, this entire <laughs> right ensemble. Here. Um, some quick earnest thanks, as painful it is, as it is for me to be earnest for a moment. I do want to thank a lot of people that helped get me here today. Uh, helping out on the show tonight, Sammy Heller, Mark Christophis, Maeve Kierens, Colin Rooney, Chris Lou Perry. They were all invaluable. And look, it's been 10 years of happy second fuse, so as you can imagine, even though my name's on it, a lot of people have helped along the way, so just indulge me for 30 seconds. Joel Hannock, CJ Smith, Jonathan Kaplan, Alan Miller, Scott Porch, Christian Harloff, Chris Van Vliet, Benjamin Wagner, Van Chica, Chatter Verdi, uh, Ricky Weiss, Lauren Bradshaw, Sean McNulty, Brian McDonald, and all of New York Comic Con. My family's here tonight, thank you for coming. Um, and this amazing, audience that kind of made Happy Second Fuse history tonight. Thank you so much. And of course, my utmost thanks to you wonderful people for sharing this very special night with me. You're the best. I thank you all. I love you all. Uh, Whatever, thank you for sharing this with me, in all honesty. It's been a special run. We're not stopping. Don't worry. Don't worry. Ten more years of Happy Second Fuse coming soon. Um, and last but not least, uh, if you look under your seats, 10 people are lucky enough to get special posters. Uh, so look under your seats. There are stickies. If you have one that says HSC, not you, David. You don't get one. Uh, if you have one, you're going to go over here and you get a poster uh, on your way out. So that's the show. That's 10 years of happy, sick, and fuse. Thank you all so much for being here Give tonight. Thank you. Yeah. And so ends another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. Remember to review, rate, and subscribe to this show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm a big podcast person. I'm Daisy Ridley, and I definitely wasn't pressured to do this by Josh. <laughs>